Following is a series of daily messages of the America's Promise radio broadcast by Pastor Sheldon Emery. Every radio broadcast has an introduction from the station, and then the person that has been introduced is expected to acknowledge the introduction with a thank you. Thank you. Yes, this is Pastor Sheldon Emery, and I do hope and pray that you have arranged your schedule to follow with me in the Bible as we discuss the opponents of this teaching about our identity and try and answer the question, are they honest? I have a 40-some page booklet in front of me written by an opponent of the teaching that the Anglo-Saxon people are Israel, and I'm going to read some things from it and then we'll answer them in relation to the Bible and also to history. So while you're getting your Bible and get set to do this, I do want to first offer the new packet of literature that we'll be offering during the month of September. We have three tracts or pamphlets that you will receive by writing to me and asking for them. They'll be sent free and postpaid if you'll just write and ask for them. One is a track which is actually a reprint of a radio broadcast. The title is, Who Are the Israelites? Then on the back of that, we have printed a map or a picture of the globe showing, according to prophecy, where the Israel people would be in the end of the age. And I think you'll find it rather interesting. We're also offering a book titled, The Rapture of the Saints. The Rapture of the Saints. Now, this ordinarily sells for $1.25 on our book list. We're going to be offering it free because I think this subject is so important, especially in this day. This is written by a Scottish minister, and I want to read what we say about it on our list of books. Quote, Proves the Catholic origin of the false doctrine of the secret pre-tribulation catching away of the believers. This rapture doctrine is now taught in most Protestant churches as if it were true. The Antichrists have martyred more than 50 million Christians in the last 50 years, yet foolish churchgoers are told the great tribulation is yet in the future and they will be raptured prior to it. Read this book then lend it to a rapture-deceived friend in Pentecostal or Fundamental Church. And the book is listed at $1.25 on our book list. We'll send it to you free with the September packet of literature, along with my track, Who Are the Israelites?, and also another one which I wrote titled, Where Is Your Soul After Death? Where Is Your Soul After Death? That's not a long one, but it certainly has brought... A lot of comments to me via the mail after people read it. My address is Pastor Emery, America's Promise, Box 5334, Phoenix, Arizona. The zip code is 85010. Also, I think we will offer a large book, a 186-page book, with the title, Tracing Our Ancestors. And that you can have for an offering of $2.50 toward this ministry. This book was written by a Mr. Haberman, originally published in 1932, about 40 years ago. The book, Tracing Our Ancestors, and you can have that along with the August packet if you'll send an offering of $2.50 to America's Promise, Box 5334, Phoenix, Arizona. As of this date, I do not know of any person who has ever read this book, Tracing Our Ancestors, except that they came to the conclusion we in truth were the descendants of the lost tribes of Israel. And I'm going to have some more to say about those lost tribes of Israel as we read and discuss this other booklet that opposes our teaching this booklet I have here, which was sent to me by a radio listener, is titled, Anglo-Israelism Refuse the Refuse. And he begins the book by saying that the teaching that the Anglo-Saxon people are Israel is actually refuse, 
And he does that by quoting part of some verses of Scripture in the third chapter of Philippians. So if you have your Bible, you turn to Philippians 3, and I'll read what he says in here, and then we'll read from the Bible itself. The man begins the first part of his booklet, quote, Refuse is the most fitting term Paul could find for all of his undoubted physical advantages. We, he says, are the circumcision who are offering divine service to God in spirit and are glorying in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. He goes on, and am even I having confidence in the flesh also? If any other one is presuming to have confidence in the flesh, I rather. Circumcision the eighth day of the race of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, but what things were gained to me, these I have deemed a forfeit because of Christ, and I am deeming it to be refuse that I may be gaining Christ. That's the end of his quote of the scripture. You see that he skipped quite a bit of those first eight verses. And part of what he skipped was in verse 8. He quoted the last part, but he didn't quote all of it. Here is verse 8 in the King James. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. In other words, what Paul is actually calling dung is not his Israelite ancestry, but the things he has lost. Now what did Paul lose? He did not lose his Benjamite forefathers. He did not lose the knowledge that he was of the Israel race. What he lost was his position and standing in the apostate, anti-Christ synagogue church of his day. Now this man has very cleverly quoted Paul talking about his ancestry and saying, If I wanted to glory in the flesh, I could. Then Paul refers to having lost some things. This man skipped that part of the verse. He left out the part of verse 8 that reads, For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Now, you read this in its full context, and Paul is talking about the things he lost of the world, which he was glad to lose. They were refuse. To say that Paul counted Israelite ancestry as nothing is saying this of a man who wrote to the Hebrews an entire letter to tell them of how Christ had taken on himself the seed of Abraham to make reconciliation for the Israel people. Paul is the same one who wrote to the Romans and said this about the Israelites. Now you think, this man spends several pages saying that any knowledge of the ancestry of any people in Israel is dung is refuse and is not to be considered. And he quotes Paul to prove his point. This is the same Paul who wrote in the ninth chapter of Romans, speaking of his brethren, verse 3, For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites. And listen to what Paul says about the Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. In other words, all of these great and glorious things of the Scripture, Paul says they belong to the Israelites. Now this man says, anyone who claims he's an Israelite, why that's refuse, and that's dung. Paul goes on about these Israelites whose are the fathers, and of whom as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Paul said, Christ came to the Israelites. Jesus Christ said that twice according to the Gospels. He said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And here this man says that those of us who preach And the Anglo-Saxons have some special place in the plan of God because they're Israel. 
why we're preaching refuse and dung. The writer of this article goes on and says that he was interested in this Israelite identity, and he read many things on Anglo-Israelism and devoured all the books that he could find on the pyramid and about Great Britain and the United States and so on. And then he says, but he read the Bible and, quote, I saw no advantage whatever in being an Israelite, for I had lost all standing in the flesh by crucifixion with Christ, and now my all was in him. I no longer desired an earthly citizenship, for I had found a celestial. Then he goes on and claims that one of the reasons that Anglo-Israelism is wrong, he says this, Essentially, Anglo-Israelism has three features of the apostasy. It is terrestrial, it is an enemy of the cross, and it has confidence in the flesh. And then he says one of the marks of apostasy is the teaching of earthly things. Well, I guess John must have been an apostate when he wrote the book of Revelation then. Because John wrote that the four and twenty elders who sang praises to God in John's vision in the fifth chapter sang this to the great God Almighty and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. Now this man says to have anything to do with the earth or earthly things is apostasy. He says being terrestrial is part of the great apostasy. Well, brother, sister, the teaching of the Bible is that Jesus Christ is going to return to earth and set up a kingdom here on the earth. And this man calls this dung and apostasy and everything else. Using that same interpretation, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Sarah must have all been apostates for Paul wrote of them in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, verse 13, These all died in the faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. And then the next verse tells what they looked forward to. For they that say such things declare plainly, that they seek a country. What did Abraham look for? Well, he looked for a country, and in the fourth chapter of Romans, Paul calls Abraham heir of the world. Heir of the world. And here these opponents of our Israelite identity, they say, because we teach so much about the world, that we are apostate that we are minding fleshly and earthly things, and our teaching is dung. Following his reasoning, our Lord Jesus Christ must have also been an apostate, because Jesus Christ taught of the earth. In Matthew 13 is the parable of the tares and the wheat. Begins this way in verse 24, Jesus Christ said, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Then he gave the parable, and then he interpreted it, including verse 38, The field is the world. The field is the world. How anyone can read Christ's parables and not understand that the kingdom of which he spoke is on the earth is beyond me, and how any man can then read that and then say that those of us who preach the kingdom of God on the earth that we are apostate and earthly and we are preaching dung is far beyond the bounds of reason. He says this of Anglo-Israelism, quote, It opposes the great truth of the crucifixion that not only was Christ crucified on Golgotha, but that the world which crucified him is utterly at enmity with God. It gives the Israelite a superior position upon no other ground than his physical descent. In other words, he is saying, and he says this in several different ways in the first few pages, that we, in effect, who teach that the Anglo-Saxons are Israel, are teaching salvation by race. Well, brother, sister, I defy you to show me, or tell me, or give me the writings 
of any man who teaches that the Anglo-Saxon people are Israel, but that that same man recognizes that the prophecies and the fulfillment of the prophecies to Israel are coming to pass only because of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We of all people are those who teach the full gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul spoke of this in the 15th chapter of Romans when he wrote of Jesus Christ in verse 8, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. In the Old Testament, Jesus Christ is spoken of as the messenger of the covenant. Malachi writes of him that way, and so does Daniel. To whom did Christ come? Well, he came to Israel to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. And what were those promises? Well, those promises were that God Almighty would redeem Israel to himself and set up a kingdom of justice and righteousness upon the earth. And those of us who teach that and who believe that, this man has the audacity to call us apostates and say, well, we're teaching earthly things. The apostles themselves had only one question after Jesus Christ taught them for 40 days. In Acts 1 is the story of what Jesus Christ did after his resurrection and before his ascension. And it says in verse 3, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Then as he was preparing to go, we read in verse 6, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Now, according to the rationalizing of this man who wrote this book, Anglo-Israelism refused the refuse, then these Israelite disciples must have been preaching dung and believing in refuse because they believed that Christ was going to restore the kingdom to the house of Israel. They asked him that. Christ did not rebuke them for believing the wrong thing. All that Christ said was, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Now, any rational, sensible, reasonable man would assume that Christ was saying, What you ask is correct, but I cannot tell you the time when it will be done. And yet these opponents of our Israelite identity in effect imply that we are apostate because we teach and preach and believe the kingdom of God upon the earth and that Israel will have a special place in the kingdom. After going on and castigating us a little further, he says of being an Israelite, quote, It is no advantage whatever to be an Israelite today. In practical effect, it is an immense hindrance, for it breeds fleshly pride and national hypocrisy and distorts the scriptures to drag God's grace in the dust. It is earthly, soulish, and counter to the cross, so that they glory in their shame. Well, brother, sister, I know hundreds of good Christian people who know they are the Israel of God by birth, and I defy you to find a better, more humble group of Christians in the world today. The knowledge that we are Israel and that Christ died for us, was resurrected from the dead to fulfill the prophecies given to our fathers through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is one of the most...